This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. This is the E911 Talk Podcast, episode 108. Recorded Friday, October 5th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, product line manager for emergency services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Back in June of 2011, it was reported that the Federal Communications Commission's Technical Advisory Committee had targeted 2018 as the end of the public switch telephone network. Now, obviously, it would be a bit of a challenge to just shut off the telephone network without replacing it with some new technology. And the importance of the National Broadband Plan to support the PSTN transition was duly noted. The potential risk of the replacement of the existing emergency services infrastructure was also identified as an area that needed to be investigated further. Since the emergency network that we know today pretty much rides exclusively on this infrastructure, one could only assume that it would only be a matter of time before we saw the mass migration of emergency services to this new architecture. Earlier this week, Bell Canada published version 16 of their 911 Public Emergency Reporting Service document that is commonly known as BID 13. If you're interested in reading a copy, it's available on the public website, and I've got a link to the written version in my blog located at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher. Now, this particular version introduces some new data interfaces and protocols that are natively based on TCP IP, primarily to support new features and capabilities that are mandated by the CRTC, which is the Canadian version of the Federal Communications Commission. Now, although this is certainly a step in the right direction, it does fail to mention geospatial routing as well as SIP or the NINA i3 framework document. Now, one of the most radical pieces of this, in my opinion, is the time frame for implementation. And some significant milestones are going to be put into place along the way. For example, the list of current interfaces, including alley display screens, will only be supported until such time that the existing network is replaced by this new architecture. And probably one of the most alarming parts of this is that the transition phase is expected to start, get this, January 1, 2013. Now by my calendar, that's less than 90 days away. The completion is expected by the end of 2014, which is just two short years and probably one of the most aggressive schedules I've heard to date. To make it even more interesting, once the TCP IP XML based alley becomes available, the old model of Annie and Alley will no longer be needed and therefore decommissioned. That's right, folks. Once they're done converting, they're shutting the old stuff off. So let's take a look on how this will affect the various components and players. From the origination side of the call, specifically the enterprise network, if this system continues to send the appropriate caller ID of an emergency call, the changeover to IP-based call delivery to the 911 center will happen in the carrier network and would really be the carrier's responsibility. The same logic would be applicable to residential services as well as anyone else that maintain their legacy connectivity to the PSTN. So don't worry, we'll still have 911. Right now, the BID 13 specification only handles the delivery of IP location information over a digital facility to the PSAP. As we stated earlier, there is no geospatial routing. And because of this, it's safe to say that additional data would be minimal at the time of implementation of this new network. Now, what it will provide, however, is a backbone framework that is TCP IP based, which could easily be extended and expanded with additional I3 functional elements. Now, of course, the other player affected by all of this is the PSAP itself. The document refers to handing off network connectivity and the point of demarcation will be the LAN interface on the router. In any network, defining the demarcation point is an important part of the network design. It's kind of like the borderline on a map. Everything up to that point will be the responsibility of the carrier. And likewise, everything after the demarcation point is the responsibility of the customer, which in this case is the PSAP. This is where there's some contention from the PSAP managers, as it is the responsibility of the PSAP to supply things like suitable cabling, connectors, and whatever other internetworking components that are going to be required to connect their LAN to the Bell Canada LAN on the Bell Canada router. Now, apparently, this has caused a little bit of confusion in the PSAPs, 
as initially they were told that this upgrade would not affect their budgets. But when you examine the communications requirements that need to exist at the service demarcation point, the story seems to change a little bit. The agencies are basically told that they'll be handed off an RJ45 interface using fast Ethernet at 100 megabits per second, full duplex, and that IEEE 802.1Q VLAN tagging will be utilized to discriminate the Alley VLAN ID. Now the problem that's going to emerge is that even centers that are considered mid-size may find it challenging to read and interpret this document from a technology perspective. I even had a call from one specific center who was told that their side of the network shouldn't cost more than fifty dollars to $100,000 to implement. But the problem is that's about fifty dollars to $100,000 more than their budget will support because they were told that the upgrade was going to be free. All of a sudden, and possibly without them realizing it, their public safety budget now has to include a significant line item for network connectivity and potentially a person to maintain it. If you own a small candy store and your electronic network enabled cash register takes a leave of absence for a day, well maybe you'll have to go back to paper and pencil while you get the problem worked out. If a public safety answering point experiences even a brief outage, lives are on the line and the outcome could be disastrous. Now, is that a reason not to move forward towards next generation 911? No, absolutely not. But it is a reason that we have to do so under the auspices of a planned, well-managed project. And we need to have buy-in and agreements from all of the agencies that will be affected. Right now, the entire industry is at a very delicate stage. The rest of the world has been living with intelligent data networking for many years. And there have been plenty of people that understand how to build a resilient, reliable network to deliver whatever data is needed, whatever medium is available, and to whatever endpoint that needs to get it. And do so in whatever format. The last thing that we want to do right now is make a move just to prove a point and while doing so, lose sight of the end game. While in one hand, I commend our carrier friend to the Great White North for stepping up to the plate and beginning to deliver an IP-based next generation emergency network. But at the same time, remember that the end state vision for next generation emergency communications in North America was promulgated by NINA last summer and is the NINA I3-08003 document otherwise known as the Functional and Interface Standard for Next Generation 911 version 1.0. Oh, and by the way, version 2.0 is being finalized as we speak. We've made a lot of progress around the world, as is seen in Europe and the NG112 LTD published earlier this year. It's no surprise that this document, when stood side by side to the Nina i3 document, shows a tremendous synergy in mindshare and an overall architecture and design. Next Generation 911 Emergency Services is definitely here. And by all means, we need to move the line forward and start implementation. We just need to be careful with what we build so it'll last just as long as the last one did. I want to say welcome to all my new followers on Twitter, at Fletch911. And feel free to comment with your opinions, your ideas, or your questions. After all, that's the whole purpose of this blog. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network, APN.